In this video, we're going to learn how to loft with geometry nodes in Blender. It's not the most straightforward thing, but it's very useful to give more granularity and more control over your meshes. For example, this project here has been done with this kind of technique, which allows us to loft within Blender. Now let's get started. So this is the example that we'll be working towards. Let me break it down for you. First off, we have this element here, which is a geometry nodes example that's made out of all of these lines here and all of those vertices. And at first, look, you might be thinking, why do I need to loft when this essentially looks like subdivision? And I think that's an excellent question to have. And the reason is that lofting gives us a little bit better control than subdivision. In a subdivision surface mesh, we're always stuck with the same number of subdivisions in both the U and the V coordinates of the mesh. So in this direction and in that direction, if our mesh is this, that will be the same. Whereas with a loft, we have a little bit more control of that. Let's jump now and try to rebuild this example. I'm gonna move all this out of the way. Let's put the cursor at the world origin. And now shift A, mesh plane. Go into edit mode create subdivision, delete all the vertices except in the middle. We're going to use these as loft curves, but I prefer to start with the mesh because it kind of makes it a little bit easier. So now let's press E to extrude and then E to extrude. How many? Four or five? Let's do a fifth vertex as well. So that's our base and shift D to duplicate this once and shift D to duplicate this twice. Let's select the middle bit now and scale it. Now let's go into 3D and start to push and pull some of these vertices around in a way that we like. So maybe we'll move these guys up in this direction and then some of these over in that direction. And clearly that's the middle that's a little bit higher than everything else. Cool. So now we have our base. Next, let's go to Geometry Node. Make sure you jump into Geometry Node Editor. Create a new one. Let's frame everything that's selected. So that's our incoming geometry let's add a subdivision surface to smooth these out next let's convert these to curves so mesh to curve and now these are meshes so now what we want to do is resample the curve so we have a very set number of samples so shift a search resample curve place it somewhere over here great so now each one of these curves has 10 points just to make it a little bit smoother next let's add a mesh primitive grid and set position this grid is just a placeholder and what it needs to have is the same number of vertices as our curves and that's pretty easy at the moment we know we have three curves so in one direction it's going to be three and in the other is this number here which is the number of points of the resampled curves so we want to make sure that these match to do that let's create an integer node and plug that into both other nodes. And let's type in something like 10. And next we want to grab the positions of our points from the curves and set the positions of the grid to those points. And we'll do that with transfer attribute. So shift A, attribute, transfer attribute. Select the source to be the curves, change from float to vector, drag out the attribute and search for position. That's it. And we want to change this from nearest face interpolated to index. And now drag this into position. Just as I was making this, Blender 3.4 comes out and there's one change that's really important to mention. And that is that the transfer attribute node that was available in the previous version has been replaced by three different nodes. So the one that we want now is called sample index. And then it works the exact same way. So just remember sample index, and then it works the same way. And we should have ours working the way it does. Sometimes the order might be a little bit different, as we can see here. For example, I'm not sure, it, it has its own internal order logic. And here it is, this is our loft. And it's very nice because now we can change the number of points. And you can see that they adjust. On top of that, once we're happy with this whole shape, we can still do a subdivision surface. And we get this. But even with this subdivision surface, we have a lot better control. Let me turn on here wireframe. 
we have a lot better control of what's happening in the x and the y directions right just because we can control the number of subdivisions at least in one direction so we can go to something very broad like four and you can see how this changes everything and it makes it a little bit duller right or we can go to something really high like 30 and the other direction the uv stays exactly the same but in one direction we have this amazing capability to do a lot of different changes right within the subdivision surface we can play with the overall volume of the creases so for example that element there is creased which doesn't really help us because we can do that even without the subdivision but there is that level of granularity in case we wanted to have it so now i'm going to get rid of the subdivision surface or just set that to zero and we're going to get a component from here so shift d and we're going to use tissue and tessellate if you are curious to know a little bit more about this technique check out my other video with the link in the description below and also in the corner make sure you have tissue enabled in your object preferences in add-ons it's a bundle add-on so it comes with blender and once you have this click on tessellate we leave everything as this except select merge as well and now we have this really nice tessellation if we want to, we can start to play now with the base mesh and change the number of subdivisions and then update this to see how we get something that looks much smoother. And on top of that now, we can also add a subdivision surface to create even smoother results. Now be careful with the subdivision surface, it can kill your computer pretty quickly. Or if we want something else, let's try to rotate our component with our tessellation select it go all the way down rotation and change to 90 degrees and now we have this very dense mesh as you see here because it's fitting this panel in every one of those small panels so let's go back in our base mesh and change the number of integers or rather let's take these levels off here now let's refresh the mesh refresh and that's looking really cool and as you can see, it's actually looking pretty similar to what we had here. If we change the crease to zero. Because our base component doesn't have a lot of geometry. And when there isn't a lot of geometry, you can imagine these vertices end up here. And then these vertices end up, let's put that back at zero, here. So then it starts to like soften it up. If we add a loop cut in here, go and refresh. You're going to see that this all of a sudden gets a lot sharper. So there are many different and interesting combinations with subdivision and with lofting. But this is the best that we get with lofting. It's not as straightforward as we would like it to be, especially if you might be used to doing this in Grasshopper or somewhere else. But it's still better than not having that option at all. And it definitely gives us a lot more control straight within Blender. So there's no need to jump around into Rhino even Grasshopper. I quite like this workflow. The most challenging bit is being able to orient the curves. And you can do this with actual curves. It doesn't need to be these kinds of curves at all. So that's it. Very simple element here. Hope you guys find this useful. If you do, let me know. If you don't, also let me know. And see you next time.